Hello and welcome to our virtual prayer meeting. Today is Wednesday, July 8th. And uh, before we get started, let me just remind you about our video Sunday School lesson. Uh, we'll be putting that up this Saturday. We have started back with that. We have uh, a different teacher every week. We have some wonderful teachers here at First Baptist, and I know they'll do an excellent job. And uh, it'll be up Saturday. We'll send out a flock note to remind you. And let me encourage you to, because it'll be through the book of Proverbs, let me encourage you to join us every week as we go through that Sunday school lesson together as a church. Even though we're not able to be in person, we're still able to worship together, even if it's virtually. So let me just encourage you about the Sunday school. Now, today I want to talk about something we don't talk a lot about, but it's important, I think, especially as we come out of a, a kind of a time of crisis, pandemic, and all the things that's going on in our nation right now, and it's, it's the issue of division. Uh, God has called us as a body of believers to come together, not necessarily to always be like-minded in the sense we're not always going to have the same opinion, but, but we are to be in unison walking together. And uh, so today's lesson, uh, I took it from uh, a, a newsletter that I got from a gentleman named Chuck Lawless. He's a professor, seminary professor, does a great job of uh, presenting topics that I think are very uh, critical to the church. And certainly I think these seven things will give us some talking points that we need to go to. Now, of course, anytime you do something like uh, this, uh, for instance, today talking about division, you know, people go, well, what's the problem? What's going on in the church? Well, nothing's going on in the church. It's, it's good. Uh, we're going to do a little Barney Fife bud nipping. We're going to get ahead of the curve. And uh, just, uh, just as a reminder, a warning that we need to be careful because the enemy makes, I think, its greatest, uh, its, his greatest gains when he gets us believers at odds with one another. The article title is Seven Reasons the Enemy Seeks to Create Division. Now, let me start by reading 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. I think it helps us kind of get that foundation. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's a, a call to action, a call to be ready. Why is that? He tells us, your adversary, the devil, our enemy, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. What we have to be reminded of, no matter what the situation is, especially in the local church, is that these are not really earthly issues. All of these things are spiritual issues, and oftentimes they are driven by our enemy as he tries to bring division amongst us as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me read to you something that Chuck Lawless said. He said, while division may at times be necessary for the sake of the gospel, and that's true, there are some issues when it comes to the gospel that are uh, reasons to divide. Uh, but then he goes on, he says, much division is nothing less than a tool of the enemy, the one who enticed Adam to blame Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Eden. Listen, from the very beginning, this has been a tool of our enemy, Satan, to bring division amongst brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, I'm going to talk about seven, uh, seven strategies, if you will, that the enemy uses to bring division within the local church. First, division typically turns believer against believer. Now, you're going, well, yeah, that's kind of the definition. That's, that's really the nature of division, and that's true, but it's also Satan's tool to divide and conquer the forces of light against him. Listen, our enemy is real. Now, he's powerful, but Jesus Christ has already overcome our enemy, and he, he has been dealt a fatal blow, and and in the end, he'll be taken care of. We, we know that by reading the, uh, the eschological or the, the, the revelatory, the end times things. We, we know that the devil is just a matter of time. He's doomed, but he is still free to roam this earth. He's very powerful. Some people go to one or two extremes. Some, 
Some give him too much credit and some give him not enough credit. He's not God. He's not on the same level as God. He is controlled by God. And as we read in the book of Job, he doesn't do anything unless God allows it. But on the same time, there are those that just want to think he's some guy in a red pajamas with a pitchfork and pointy ears. And, and that's not true either. So we have to understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And when this division begins to rise up, that's when we need to take notice and deal with it at its very core and understand that it is spiritual. We don't threaten Satan when we're shooting each other in the back. And that is so true. When we turn on one another and begin to go after one another, I can just picture in my mind Satan just laughing and having a good time going, yep, I've done it again. Well, we don't need to let that happen. Number two, division distracts from the work of the Great Commission. Division distracts from the work of the Great Commission. Now, I believe this is true. Every church that goes through some kind of division, even if it's for just a short while, oftentimes for a long while, they lose their focus. And what's the focus? Well, what is our focus to be? It's the Great Commission. What is that? That is to reach our community in this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we're busy fighting one another, caught up in this division, caught up in this mess that our enemy has enticed us into, then you know what? We're not focused on the main thing, and that's reaching the world with Jesus Christ. So. One of the greatest dangers is when division rises up within a church is that we lose focus and we're not doing what God has called us to do. I'm so thankful that when Jesus went to heaven, now we know he's coming back, but when he ascended into the clouds, he left us with our marching orders as believers today until he returns again and calls the church home our job, our responsibility as believers is to carry the gospel message to the unbelieving world. And we can't lose, we can't lose sight of that. We, we must stay focused on that at all costs. Number three, division harms our witness before a fractured world. Division harms our witness before a fractured world. Listen, the world watches us. Now, whether you, you may say, well, that's not fair, uh, that's unrealistic, but, but it's a reality is that if you, are, if you claim the name of Jesus, if uh, you're a believer, a follower of Jesus, then guess what? The lost world is watching you because they want to see how you react. Some are trying to determine whether your faith is real. Some just want to catch us messing up. And, and listen, we're not, we're not sinless, we're not perfect, but one of the best places for them to see disunity is when division rises in the church. And oftentimes they'll point their finger to that church and say, uh-huh, see a bunch of hypocrites. They can't even agree amongst themselves. Well, that's the enemy working. Listen to what Jesus himself said in John chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I'm in you, that they also may be in us so that the world, listen, that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be perfected in unity so that the world may know that you sent me. That's twice he's repeated that, that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. Listen to this statement. Supernatural unity, by the way, that's the only way we can have true unity within the body of believers. It is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit Supernatural unity is a witness of the work of the Spirit. Division is an evidence of the work of the enemy. So anytime there is division in the church, and it's not division over the gospel, then that is work of the enemy. Number four, division is often tied to our clinging 
to our idols. Division is often tied to the clinging of our idols. Now, you may think an idol is some little statue or a little Buddha statue somewhere that people pray to. Listen, there are a whole lot more idols than that in our lives. An idol is anything that keeps us from fulfilling the will of God. It is anything that keeps us from being obedient to the will of God. For instance, I love to fish. I love to fish out of my kayak with my wife. Guess what? That can become an idol in my life when I allow that to take priority over what God has called me to do as a believer. Now, he's given me plenty of room to enjoy the, the, the pleasure of going fishing in my kayak with my wife, but there are times when that needs to take a back seat to the priority that God has placed in my life. Too often division is connected to our personal desires or preferences and we fight for things, listen, here's the key, we fight for things that matter little in eternity. Do you realize that most church fusses really have nothing to do with anything that will impact eternity? We selfishly cling to what we want without regard for others, including God, and that's idolatry. So. We're going to have to get out of our mindset that idolatry is just some little statue. No, there are many things, including I got to have it my way or no way. That's one of the most dangerous things within a body of believers. But you know what? Ultimately, it's God that calls the shots. Again, that's a way that our enemy uh, gets us fussing and fighting, brings division in the local body of believers, is when we don't get what we won't. We don't get our personal preferences. Number five, division demoralizes even the best leaders. Now, I'm not talking about just ministerial staff. I'm talking about any leader within the church. Uh, Chuck Lawless said, few veteran church leaders bear no scars of some kind of church division in the past or the present, and the anguish of division can be long-lasting pain that negatively influences the rest of one's ministry. Listen, when I came here a little over four years ago as your pastor, it became very clear that there were certain areas where there was division and there was pain, and sometimes that still pops up every now and again. But I want you to know, whether it's ministerial or lay-led, leaders who go through times of division, it, it is destructive to them physically, mentally, and even spiritually. And of course, the enemy knows that. That's why he targets particularly the leaders of a church. Now, number six, division can turn young generations from the church. Division can turn young generations from the church. And you may be saying, well, that's not right. They ought to come no matter what. Well, they ought to. But listen, when you've grown up in a church where there was nothing but fussing and fighting and carrying on, young people today, they say, I don't want anything to do with that. That, that is not acceptable to me. And they leave the church. Now, hopefully, God will bring them back into the church and bring them to a place where there is less division and strife. But, but that is reality. Again, it's not necessarily right or wrong, but it's a reality that when there is such division in the church, people often will run from that. And sometimes when they run, they become unchurched. Number seven. This is the last one. Division gives the enemy a victory. Division gives the enemy a victory. Listen, I'm, I'm not the most competitive person in the world, but, but in the right thing, you know, when, when I'm maybe in a, a fishing tournament or something, you know what, I, I want to win. I want the victory. And, and I'll do everything that I can within uh, the, the, the guidelines, the rules, to achieve that victory. Well, here's the deal. Our enemy, he has no rules. He'll do whatever it takes to bring division 
in the church and his goal is to destroy that church because if he can get that church fussing and fighting and get their eyes off the main thing and that is carrying the gospel to a lost world then he's got a victory he, he doesn't have to shut the church down because he's already achieved the victory he's already achieved his goal of getting their eye off the main thing you know paul was clear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, uh, that that is other human beings. It may look like it on the surface, but but it's far more than that. Listen to Ephesians chapter six, verse twelve. This this helps us keep everything in perspective. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Like I said earlier, this is not a flesh on flesh battle. This is a spiritual battle, especially within the church body. And that's how we have to deal with it. We have to recognize that and quit pointing our finger at our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ in the church and blaming them when we, we recognize this is an enemy at work. This is a spiritual battle and we deal with it from a spiritual perspective. Chuck Lawless says, we, so we ignore their wiles. In fact, we give in to them and follow the enemy's lead when we turn against each other. When we turn against each other, we're just playing into the enemy's hands. We're doing exactly what he wants us to do. One last statement and then I'll close. There's a reason Jesus prayed for us to be one. Unity is a gift. Listen, it is a gift and work of God. It, remember, it's supernatural. Let's ask God to help us stand together against the enemy these days. Why am I bringing up division? Well, we're coming out of a time, uh, and uh, we're coming out of a time where it, there's a lot of uncertainties, unknowns, and a lot of stuff going on, a lot of decisions being made, and it's easy to begin to uh, be divided. That's what our enemy is looking for an opportunity to do. What I'm encouraging you to do today is pray for me, pray for the staff, pray for our leadership, pray for our church body that we won't give in to the enemy, that we will recognize that this is a spiritual battle and that we will, we will face it head on in the proper context and the proper way. I close with this. This is a statement I heard many years ago. I can't even tell you who I heard it from, but it's so true and especially when we talk about our subject today. I believe it was on a radio when I heard a preacher say this. He said, we must walk arm in arm even when we don't see eye to eye. We as a body of believers must always walk arm in arm even when we don't always see eye to eye. Listen, we're human beings. We're going to have different opinion. Uh, we may not agree with this or, or agree with that or, or whatever. And, and you know what? That's fine. But we can't let those differences divide us. We must continue to walk arm in arm even when we don't always agree as a body of believers. Well, I hope and encourage this encourages you, one, to pray for your church, also to be watching and making sure that you're not a part of building division within our local congregation. It's important that each of us do our part. Listen, I want to pray for you, and then we'll be done today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, the power that it has. And Lord Jesus, for First Baptist Church, Nashville, Georgia, and for every Christ-believing church in this world, I pray that we will understand that this is a spiritual battle, and we'll be on guard, watching and waiting for the enemy for him to try to attack so that we can repel it through spiritual means. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you that he is a defeated foe, that our enemy, his, his end has already been determined. It's just a matter of us having to deal with him on a day-to-day -day basis until you call us home. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.